Hey, Steve here. In this video, I'm going to share with you my two main methods of cloning objects out of an image in Photoshop. So one way is going to be really, really simple, and it's what I use for relatively simple tasks uh, where I need to clone something small out of an image or where that object that I'm cloning has got a sort of an easy background to remove it from. And then the second example is going to be a lot more difficult and it's going to require a different approach. So we can just jump straight in. And what we're going to be removing from this image is just this handrail going down into the pool. So quite simply, I'm going to select the spot healing brush tool. That's my favorite tool from up here. It's pretty much the only one I actually use. And I'm going to do my edits on a new layer so that I don't alter the background and that means I can undo with ease um, and just sort of completely get rid of any changes if you know just by deleting the layer uh, and that only works if this sample all layers is checked so just to be aware of that now I'm going to just adjust the brush size so that it's just going to cover the item that I'm cloning out and I'm just going to simply draw a line with the brush over this uh, hand railing. And I'll stop with the top half about here. And hopefully Photoshop is gonna do a good job and remove it for me. So super easy. Now you might wanna just tidy up a few little bits so I can just see, hasn't quite got the color right in a couple of patches here. I don't know if anyone would really ever normally notice that, but it's only just because I've only just done it that I think I'm noticing. Uh, so now we can turn this layer off and on to see how uh, Photoshop has actually done that for us. Uh, and then I need to remember, of course, to get rid of the reflection. So it's a bit more of a tricky uh, removal, but I think this uh, this clone stamp tool, or sorry, the healing brush tool, is going to do a pretty good job. And yeah, that's probably an acceptable job that the uh, the healing brush tool has done for us. So quite simply, that's the first approach that I use for relatively simple cloning tasks, like I said. The second one, this could take a bit longer. So I hope you've got a cup of tea or something to uh, keep you hydrated while we go through this. Uh, the second approach, what I'm gonna be using mostly here is good old copy and paste. So. I'm going to be removing this cannon from the image and the reason it's going to be a complete pain and pretty difficult is because we've got this railing behind here that we're going to have to basically fabricate pixels uh, to replace so obviously if i was to try and cut the cannon out then it, you know it's not a clean easy background with no detail to uh, to kind of to replace it with so again uh, well, before I get started, actually, let me just show you what this, uh, what the healing brush tool would kind of do if I tried to use it here. So I'll add a new layer. And let's just see what happens if we just try and erase it just with this brush tool. And that seems to have got it all. So let's let go of the mouse now. And quite a mess, as you can see. So that's not ideal. So here's my approach. Now, first of all, I'm going to duplicate the background and then just hide the background just so that I've got a copy of it that I can uh, always fall back on. And I don't know why, it just seems, uh, it just seems better in some intangible way. But rather than uh, clone the cannon out, I'm going to actually just delete it and then clone into the uh, into the empty space. So I'm just using the uh, the marquee tool, the lasso tool, I should say, uh, to select the cannon, and then I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard and it's going to remove it. So we haven't got to worry about actually covering the cannon up anymore because it's gone. So we just got to think about filling in the empty pixels. So Let's do the difficult bits first, which is going to be the railing. Uh, now, what I think I'm actually going to do 
is pretty much the same as what I've just done with the uh, with the cannon there to remove it. I'm going to just select part of the railing here and then edit and then copy merged. You can use uh, the keyboard if you like. Uh, uh, Command Shift and C or Control Shift C if you're on Windows. But just so that you guys can see what I'm doing here, I'm going to go via the menu. So copy merged and then edit paste. And now with the move tool, I'm just going to just literally drag that across. And with the arrows on the keyboard, I'm just going to fine tune the positioning there. So I'm just looking to roughly line it up. So probably about there, I think it looks like it works. And then I'll do the same thing from the other side. And the reason I'm going from one side and then the other is because if you look, the water in the background is actually a slightly different color thanks to the sunlight. So over here, it's more of a purpley color. Over here, it's a bit more peachy. So I'm going to kind of bring them in, you know, bring this railing in from either side and then they'll meet in the middle and I'll have to just deal with blending it uh, <laughs> when they meet in the middle. So let's see, how's the best way to do this? Let's just grab another section here. I'll probably take this rock with it um, and then up here and then again, edit, copy merged, edit, paste, grab the move tool to move this section into place. And now again, with the keys, the arrow keys on the keyboard, I'm going to see how well I can get this lined up. Now, that's not too bad right there. That's lined up pretty nicely. We've got some missing pixels down here, but that's okay. Um, and they, yeah, it's not quite meeting up in the middle there. So let's see if I can be a bit cheeky and uh, transform. Uh, let's use a warp tool. Well, uh, maybe I'll just use the. Oh, let's see with the warp tool. Let's see if we can just kind of stretch it out to make it meet while keeping the lines all straight. Well, I think that's definitely got those uh, got the railing meeting up in the in the middle there. So next, let's zoom in a bit. And we can see there the problem with the colored water in the background. Um, what I might actually do is just add a layer mask to this, to this part, uh, grab the brush tool, and then just mask this out from up here just to see how much I can, or uh, well, to see how little of an impact I can make it have. So at the moment now, it's only going to be sort of darker behind the railings. And then we'll worry about the water when we get there, once we've just got a good railing in place. Now, let's just, okay, it's not really overlapped enough in this section here. Uh, to be able to mask anything out to blend it in. So how can I deal with that? Let's grab another, grab another bit. Um, and well, let's just, let's just copy this part. No, do that again. Let's copy this part from this layer. Now, I'm not going to do copy merge this time. I only want to copy from here. Actually, do you know what? I can just duplicate this layer and then drag it across again. Hmm. Don't know if this is going to work now. Uh, all right, let's leave it there. And now we've got two bits that we're going to need to mask. So again, notice here we've got a bit of a funny edge and that's from just copying and pasting the uh, the original section of the railing. So I'm just going to see if I can use a black brush to get rid of that hard edge. Okay, I think, yeah, that, that probably does it. Right now, so we've got this part, which has also got 
that hard edge on it. Let's get rid of that from here. Okay. This is, uh, probably should do that afterwards, actually. All right, let's move this just to make sure it's in the right place. And now I can mask this top layer, this section. I can take that brush again and just sort of blend the railing in here. Now it's not quite lining up perfectly. But I think that's okay because now I can maybe adjust it a little bit more to there so that the actually let's go the other way so that that lines up and I think we're in a pretty good position there now maybe I'll just see if I can bring a bit of this bush through now all the lines are lining up I can try to blend that background bit in a bit more naturally okay that's looking pretty good so now let's fix up this straight edge here and just tidy that little gap up there that I created all right let's zoom out and see how that looks uh, well the railing looks pretty good so I guess now what we can do is just maybe start looking at fixing the water. Uh, so let's add a new layer on top of our document. And this time let's come back to the spot healing brush because this is going to be a relatively simple thing for it to patch. And yeah, that's done a pretty good job there. Uh, let's zoom in, see if we can fill in this bit and see what it's going to do all right we've got some yeah, we've got some dodgy lines here we can fix that up in a sec and now i might actually resort to just the regular clone stamp tool to just fill this little gap here all right that's not the cleanest looking um what do we need to do here to get that looking a bit a bit better? Well, let's go back to the healing, uh, the spot healing brush tool. And actually, do you know what? I know what I can do. Um, I'm just going to add another new layer and now I'll go back to the brush tool sample a color from the sea and just on a low opacity just going to brush in the water there just over that edge where it's kind of done funny things so just getting the color to match and now now that the color kind of matches and the lightness if we wanted to bring a bit of that texture back from the uh, from the, the waves, because you know it's just a big sort of blob of color now, uh, what we can now do is use the uh, patch tool. So this is where the patch tool comes in handy. Now, unfortunately, we do need to do this on a pixel layer, so I'm going to need to um, select the entire canvas, edit, copy merged, and then edit paste so now we've got a copied basically a, a flattened version of the image just in a new layer on top and now i can take the uh, well let's do it from this side so i can select the water down here and then up into the sky a little bit and i can drag it over here place it there and it's going to bring with it the texture but it's going to take the the lightness from underneath so there we go that looks pretty good now let's do the same 
from this side just to bring that texture back in. I do need to lower the horizon a little bit. Oh, that's not worked quite so well. Let's do it in a bit of a smaller patch. Okay, so there's the difference. Now, I could sit here forever and try and fine tune this. There is a perfect solution if I was just going to give it enough time, but you probably don't need to see me do that. Um, yeah, it's, it's okay for now, but essentially I would just be repeating this same patch process until it just looked perfect uh, and maybe undoing and redoing, just selecting different bits of, of the water to patch with. Um, but we'll move on because that's, that's probably acceptable now. Right, so we've got a couple of uh, options for how we're going to fill in this patch here of, you know, in, the, in the grass where we uh, need to create some grass from somewhere. Um, but let's see how good old spot healing brush tool does. So again, another new layer. Now let's just patch over the uh, transparent part. And hopefully it's going to do a good job and just fill this in with grass. And well, that was better than I thought it was going to be. So, okay, here we go. That's actually, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Now I might just tidy up this dark edge here. Oh no, I'm going to need to give this a couple of goes. Yeah, that's okay. And now, of course, we've got this big shadow here. Let's see if the spot healing brush can actually work some real magic and just get rid of this shadow. I don't think it was actually intended for patching over areas quite as big as this, but Look at that, absolutely magic. So <laughs> there we go. Um, now we've probably got a bit of tidying up that we could do in here. Uh, it does, yeah, it just looks a bit sort of, you know, there's a few different weird bits of light happening. Um, but in terms of the actual cloning, uh, you know, this is probably about as good as I can get it in the, well, how long I've been doing this? This is 18 minutes so far, the video. Um, but rather than try to perfect all of the uh, bits and pieces in between there, what I could do is just try and cover it up. So uh, let's uh, grab a brush tool. And again, let's sample a sort of warm color from around the water here somewhere. I'm on a low opacity. And so let's just sort of see what happens if we try and enhance or take that sunlight effect and, and sort of, oh no, that's a bit too much. Um, but just sort of make that, that light flare more into the foreground. Well, I think there is a solution here if I can just get the brush stroke right. It's not quite looking that good. I think just a simple, just like one is probably going to do it. And there we go. Well, this, to be honest, turned out a bit better than I thought it was going to do. Um, so, you know, hopefully there's been a few different tactics and techniques here that you have uh, picked up and you can use them to take on any clone job that you dare. Uh, you know, no, there's no job too big or too small for good old copy and paste cloning. Now, if you want to subscribe to my channel for more videos and to be notified every time I publish a new video to my stream, then just hit that subscribe button that's on the screen right now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.